in these days of lockdown, a phrase well suited to my state of rightly seclusion, but perhaps too forceful in its overall inference, in making one's house seem like a prison cell, and giving me the unfortunate dual characterization of both inmate and jailer, I have at least had more time to devote to my own correspondence. One letter, in particular, caught my eye. It was written in response to the revival of a long-running series of mine on BBC One. Dear Mr Bennett, As much as I enjoyed watching the new episodes, I could not help but feel that you would connect with your audience far better by incorporating the lives and experiences of real people more obviously in your works. Bring it up to date. I propose that for your next series, you produce a coronavirus special. And if you are concerned about finding accurate warts and all material, look no further than the members of my own ladies' choir in Carlton. These ladies, though separated from one another by self-isolation, have devoted themselves to entertaining our village community. Despite a tremendous determination of spirit, a number of our ideas have admittedly not gone so well. A virtual can-can was mooted, but did not go ahead due to a shortage of fishnet stockings and the number of injuries sustained when attempting the high kicks. Besides which, Hilda Kershaw is very conscious of her varicose veins and refuses to have them broadcast to the world for fear she might be forced to appear on embarrassing biddies on Channel 4. She's always been rather hard of hearing. My husband Graham is a member of Carlton's Manshed Choir and says they have a Zoom meeting every week. Or at least that's how he explains his disappearing into the spare bedroom with a six-pack of beers every Monday night. I don't mind, so long as he doesn't spill anything on the carpet. Guests or no guests, I don't want that room becoming his private snug but at least it explains away most of the far-from-tuneful noises emanating from under the door. I thought I'd mention the Zoom meeting idea to the ladies, and we've had a couple of gatherings but with mixed results. Getting everyone's full attention can be a bit of a challenge. Janet is currently holed up with her three grandchildren, who, during the last meeting, managed to plaster the laptop screen with Play-Doh, thus rendering her invisible. And Angela, from Church Close, does insist on baking while we practice, forcing us to compete with the bread maker and electric mixer. Yesterday she dropped a whole tray of rock buns on the floor, just as we'd reached the climax of John Rutter's For the Beauty of the Earth. The effect was actually rather pleasing, though the final verses were blotted out by Angela swearing and throwing the remaining rock buns across the kitchen, thus making it a far from joyful hymn of praise. As our usual pianist has, since the beginning of this crisis, been marooned on a family holiday in Mallorca, Caroline, up at the hall, has heroically stepped into the breach and agreed to stand in for him on her, eight, on her antique 18th century harpsichord, once played, so she claims, by Johann Sebastian Bach. She reminds us of this at the start of every meeting, as if, having tinkled on the ivories once, the great man is still hovering in the room, demanding that his flawless touch be recognised. Despite the possibility of it being graced by Bach's fingers, the sound it today produces is far from sublime, being badly out of tune, and the nearest qualified specialist being in Halifax. All in all, it might serve us well enough for Ave Verum, but doesn't quite hit the spot for when the saints go marching in, 
or the buggy woogie bugle boy of company B, which was never much to my taste anyway. But if we even hint at its unsuitability, Caroline threatened not only to stop playing altogether, but to resign her membership. And as she is the only one of us who is classically trained, she sang with the Glasgow Conservatoire in her twenties, she is thus rendered indispensable. To add insult to our various injuries, our best alto, Jasmine, has lost interest. She's nineteen and has been locked down with her boyfriend for the last few months, and in that time has decided she's had better things to be doing. She appeared for one meeting about a month ago, resplendent in her Winnie the Pooh pyjamas, but all we got last time was a wonderful view of her shagpile carpet. Despite most of the group's collective conviction to carry on, I sometimes think it might be more fun, but maybe less entertaining, if we just changed horses and cultivated a fondness for Mozart, Brahms and Liszt, like the boys. With kindest regards, Anne Dolby. I haven't yet responded to Anne's letter, but feel that if I were to make a series featuring the locked-down ladies of Carlton, it might be safer for all of us if they stayed locked down. <laughs>